it was in the early days of my serious walk with God. One of my old buddies from the old life, I would see him every once in a while. So I told him after I got born again and after I came out from among them, I said to him, if you need anything, feel free to come over to my place or call or whatever you need to do. I'm not hanging around you anymore, but if you need me, it doesn't matter what time of the night or the day, whatever the case is, I'll make time for you. I'll do whatever I can to be there for you. And so lo and behold, one night he came over to my place and he said, I have to talk to you. Can you come over to my place? I said, okay, let me just step back, give you a little bit more of a, a context. Maybe a couple weeks before that it wasn't long, maybe not even a couple weeks. I can't remember exactly how many days I was was literally on the street and there was this brother in the Lord whom I knew. He approached me and he said, Chris, I had a dream about you. I said, wow. Okay. What'd you dream? He said, I'm not going to tell you what I dreamt, but I'm telling you right now, I believe it's a warning from the Lord. Don't walk into a party scene, smoking, drinking, music, drugs, all that kind of stuff. Don't allow yourself into that kind of situation. So I'm like, you got it. I'll take that as a word from the Lord. And I did. So anyway, this guy came over to my place. Not the guy that told me about the dream, but this other guy. He came over to my place and he said, I need to talk to you. It was late at night too. It was like 11 at night. So I said, okay. I'm thinking, okay, I promised him I'd go. And so I went over with him to his place and lo and behold, we walked into his place and there's all my old buddies and they're all partying, smoke filled room, alcohol, all kinds of stuff going on. They're like, Christopher, man, Christopher, we need you. You were in our band. You you just went AWOL on us kind of thing. And we can't do it without you. We need you back in the band. See, at that time, a few months before that, we had a pending recording contract in Hollywood. And immediately I thought about that warning that I got from that other guy on the street. As soon as I walked in, I'm thinking, oh boy. I said to them, I will come back on one condition. And every song we sing is for the glory of God. And when I said that, it's like, Oh, really, man? I'll come back only on that condition. They were not interested when I said that. From that moment, when I walked into that room, when I was done there, I didn't spend a whole lot of time there, just a little bit, and then I went back home. I felt like the Lord left me. It's like the presence of God that I was enjoying for a number of months before that, it seemed like it was gone. I felt empty. I felt dry spiritually. I just felt like God wasn't there. And so I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry for even spending a second in that kind of environment. I feel really bad. Please don't let me feel like this. Come back in your presence, in your power, the way I was experiencing you before. And I prayed and I prayed and I thought, oh, and I felt so bad. I felt so deserted in a sense, alone, I felt. And I'm praying and it's like it, nothing works. Praying and praying and praying. I end up going to sleep that night and I'm thinking, well, maybe when I wake up, it'll be a new morning. And lo and behold, I woke up the next morning and it was still the same way. I felt like God was gone. I was dead, dry, empty. It was a horrible, horrible feeling. I was just a teenager sitting on my bed. Again, the foot of my bed, there was a window and I had the Bible open in front of me. The sun was shining in through the window, but not on my face, on my chest, right? Because the sun was shining in like that. And so I was was reading this passage. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. When I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was one like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. The hair of his head was white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a fiery flame. His feet were like fine bronze, as it is fired in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of cascading waters. He had seven stars in his right hand, a sharp double edged sword came out of his mouth and his face was shining like the sun at full strength. And I read that at the time I still felt dead, dry, empty. And I'm like, man, what would it be like to look into his face? His face shines like the sun in all of its strength. Literally the sun's coming in through the window and the sunlight was hitting my chest. So I'm sitting in my bed, but I kind of looked down to just get a little glimpse, little peek at the sun, I'm squinting and thinking, what would it be like to see Jesus like that? And then I read this and his face was shining shining like the sun at full strength. And then I looked again at the sun. And then I read this. And then I looked again. And all of a sudden, it was like he showed up. All of a sudden, it's like I saw him. And I wept. 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 My bed was covered in tissue. It was an amazing experience. Absolutely amazing. 